Hello everybody. Spitfire Audio have released their Abbey Road Orchestra first violins. It's the first tonal sample library to come out of the Abbey Road Orchestra series. Um, they've done previously low percussion, high percussion, metal percussion. But this is where we can start to judge whether this sort of next generation library, so to speak, um, is really um, you know, delivering on what it promises. And I have to tell you, in the short time I've had it, it absolutely 100% does. Um, I will be, in this little video, we will be diving in, showing you what it does really well. I will explain my one or two caveats about it at the moment. And then at some point, I'm going to be writing a bit of music so you can see it in action, okay? So you want me to dive straight in as soon as possible. Uh, so this, the pro version, it's the first of the Abbey Road orchestras to come uh, with a pro and a core version. Pro is 449 US dollars, core is 249. Right, what does it do well? What does it do better um, than I've heard done before? Um, the legato is absolutely astounding. It's really, really everything you could want from a legato patch. Right, what do I like about what that does? Um, it's a complete, this is controlling vibrato. It's mapped to, I've got it mapped to a fader on my, uh, on my monogram here. Um, this is dynamic. So one fader is that one. It gives, it's the first time I've played a, a number of sample libraries are trying to do this. It's the first time I've played it that it actually really works. Part of the reason is that the vibrato when it comes in is completely progressive. You can't spot the join. It doesn't go in big jumps, which quite a lot of the others do. The other thing is the realism of the dynamic range. There's much more dynamic range there than there is in most instruments. And so you really start, what you're listening to there is a player playing pianissimo. And then it seamlessly cross fades. Uh, until you get the full fortissimo. So you need to get used to this library. It, it isn't just like pick it up. I mean, it is pick it up out of the packet and just start playing, because that's what I did, because I hate reading manuals and things, don't you? But you do actually need to look at, uh, look at Paul Thompson's walkthrough on the, on the website. I really don't particularly like walkthroughs very much. You know, I, I just want to dive in. But Paul's walkthrough is really good. Um, it's uh, extremely informative. And if you watch that, if you're seriously considering this library, uh, you will be very pleased. Okay, so the, there's a couple of things about this legato which make it really different. Um, one is it responds to, on the pro version, it responds to velocity of the first note as well as the second note. So if I'm playing um, softly, you get a normal fingered legato. If I play really strong on the first note, you, what you're getting then is a bow change um, um, legato and a more detaché start. So you've got that control. You've already got control over the style of the legato. If you play it really fast, you get um, the sort of the, the, the run. So Um, that works really well. If you want to play really softly with the second note, you get portamento. And if you go in, there's because obviously it's, it's in, in, the portamento is determined by the velocity of the second note. So if you play it really softly, then it kicks off the um, portamento transition. As you edge to the edge of, I think it's 20, um, the ve velocity thingies. <laughs> As you get close to the 20 velocity thingies, <clears throat> it sort of cross fades into the normal transition. So it eases up on the swooshiness. So you're probably going to need to go in and edit that with a pencil in your editor. But what it's allowing you to do is to control the amount of swooshiness, which is absolutely brilliant, 
really good. Because just being able to turn on and turn off Portamento, it's either going to be super swooshy or not, is a bit kind of... But this is really good. Um, let's quickly look at the... Uh, okay, so you've got four types of shorts. Spiccatissimo. Spiccato. Staccato, longer still. Macato. And the Macato has a release trigger, so if you lift off, it makes it a shorter Macato. Pretty good. Each of these have a tightness control, which essentially eats into or doesn't eat into uh, the start of the sample, which means it's either going to be really quick to the uh, any kind of um, short note. Um, the very first transient you hear is not where the, the, the emphasis of the note is. So what you end up doing is playing just very, very fractionally before um, the downbeat. So you're going, yeah, like that. And that is, that is where you want to control the tightness. The other great thing, now the way, oh, you're thinking, what happens if I quantize all my music? Because then everything's going to sound late. Yes, that's what happens. That's why in your door you have this control for track delay. Okay, that one there. That's what track delay is for. So if everything's sounding a bit late, you can just pull it back. Now, one of the things they've done here is they've standardized the track delay. So if you set this uh, tightness control for the middle, it is 40 milliseconds track delay. I think that's what they said. Or is it 30? Anyway, you, uh, you have to look it up. Anyway, I think it's four. Or is it six? No, it's 60, sorry, it's 60, 60, that's right. So uh, if it's then super swooshy, um, it's uh, 80, and I think if it's super tight, it's 40. So in other words, all their shorts are edited, so you don't have to worry about trying to work out what the uh, track delay is, which is big thumbs up. We like that. Um, you've got tremolo, long harmonics, pizzicato, con legno. You've got minor and major trills. You've got minor third trills, major third trills. You've got um, measure tremolando, which is uh, you can sync to tempo, um, and this, these are done at 150 and 180 BPM. And then they've got split out all the legatos, the uh, legato runs, the legato detache, portamento, legato slide, and the longs. And it's worth saying with the longs, let's just go back to the, uh, there we go, Oop. extended. Um, the extended bit is if you play them normally, you get normal. If you play them very softly, um, you get a sort of little swell into it. <laughs> it's really good, isn't it? I know. Um, now, on the core edition, you don't get as many toys. You get normal uh, legato. You get um, you get a couple of variations on lower. Um, it still sounds absolutely wonderful, but a lot of the bang for your buck, the next generation type stuff, the stuff which makes this violin, uh, first violin, is probably the most advanced I've ever played, um, is in the pro version. So the core, the core version is going to be more akin to what you are used to from Spitfire and other libraries, the pro version is the one which stands out. Um, but if you just buy the core version, you can pay the difference and get the um, pro version. And what I suspect people will do is they will buy pro version of, of violin ones, because they're, they're the ones which really matter, and the pro version of cello, and then potentially core versions of second violins, violas and basses, for example. Um, or they'll just buy everything in core version and then upgrade them. I mean, this is going to be a long journey. And this is where I come back to the point about this is a library which shouldn't really exist. Because if you imagine, I mean, is this the first orchestral library you've ever seen? No, there are hundreds of them. I mean, and Spitfire has produced quite a few of their own. Now, every time you try and go the extra mile, as they clearly have here and successfully done so, um, it's going to require an ever, you know, 
ever greater investment of money and time. And that's got to be reflected as it is in the price. And that means there's a dis decreasing number of people who are going to be able and willing to pay that. And so at some point, there's a tipping point where there's no longer enough people who are going to be prepared to pay more for the next generation thing. And so it's going to go, boom. I thought we'd already reached that point. Thankfully, we haven't because this definitely is. Where this says it's a profession, uh, you know, when it says pro, you know, it really means it. Uh, it means, you know, because this is, what is it, 350, 300 something pounds or $450. And that's first violins. That's not seconds, violas, cellos, basses. That's not woodwinds. Uh, that's not horns, trumpets. Br I mean, I don't know how many different parts this whole library is going to fall into. I mean, we've already got um, three of them. We've got low percussion. Uh, high percussion and metallic percussion and that doesn't include um, uh, timpani, it doesn't include tune percussion, so there's going to be lots and lots and lots and lots of these um, to build into a truly astonishing um, orchestral library which is as close as I think we're ever likely to get. I honestly can't imagine anybody is going to do um, sampled, li sampled orchestration any better than this. Um, it's as good as it gets. Um, but it comes at a price. Um, now, you know, those of you who have long memories will remember that uh, Spitfire started out um, with a bespoke series where they literally just made, they sold, what was it, 20? Remind me, Paul, was it 20 or 100 copies or something? That was the agreement with the library. They went in and they recorded their own bespoke library uh, which cost tens and tens of thousands of pounds. I bought the string section uh, and it was absolutely phenomenal. It, at the dark, I tell you what, can I find it? Have I still got it? I mean, because it still stands up today, frankly. Um, let me see. I'm not sure if this is in here, so we'll have to find out. Uh, 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 where's. Uh, okay, let's. There's a chamber. Yes! Chamber strings, here we go. Okay, this was where Spitfire started. It's just lovely. That's where it all began. And for that, you would pay tens of thousands of pounds because it was better than absolutely anything anywhere. And from that, they went on to do the commercial stuff and then they emerge here at the other end of the tunnel, producing what is the most advanced string library in the world. But it isn't without one. Look, the caveats I've got are about what isn't in here. We've got four shorts. Some other libraries have a lot more variation on that, blurred and all kinds of other things. Now, a lot of that's taken care of with the, um, these controls up here, but that still isn't as many as some. There's um, lots of stuff going on. There's long harmonics, there's no short harmonics. There's pizzicato. Um, the snap pizzicato is on the top end of that. Oh, no, I'm sorry, we're still on. Uh, there we go, back to that. So pizzicato. Go so uh, the snap pizzicato is at the top velocity of pizzicato. Personally, I prefer that separated out. Um, minor and major trills my, uh, and these uh, ones in thirds, the minor third and the major third, which is really, really, really useful. Uh, and the tremolo and everything else. But what else is, um, there's no dynamic movement stuff. So there's no crescendo, decrescendo or swells, which I really like. Um, and it is, uh, there's no sordine, there's no mutes in here. So we can assume that there will be violin one consortino, just like the Berlin lot do. Um, so factor that in <laughs> when you're selling. When you when you go and sell your kidney, remember that uh, probably consortino is going to come in a separate library. Um, so it's going to be expensive, but it's going to be better than anything else out there um, by the time it's finished. Um, 
they've also really got to grips with uh, the mic position thing. Because some libraries have had the most crazy number of, li of microphone positions. I mean, tw what? I don't, I, I, I barely know where, you know, you're going to put a microphone in, in the canteen so you can hear it come through the walls. No, but this is sensible um, by comparison. Um, so if we dive in, I'll show you the mic positions. Uh, can I show you the mic positions easily? Yeah, sure. So good. Good. There we go. Right. So you got, um, uh, what am I playing? Here we go. Right. Okay. Mix one. This is a fairly ambient mix. Um, Simon Rose mix. Sounds absolutely gorgeous. Mix two is a tighter version uh, of the, uh, with a more directional um, um, tree mics and things like that. So it gives you a more contained space. Now, if you're going for choral version, core version, you'll just get mix one. But with the um, pro version, oh, that's not really a very useful example. What we usually demonstrate this uh, shorts with is with um, the, uh, uh, the shorts, because then you can hear the room. So if you go with, here we go, uh, let's see. That is a gorgeous sound. That is the sound I'm looking for all the time. It's the sound of a scoring stage. It's not the sound of some epic hall which will just ambient on forever. It's the sound of a room which looks a bit like that. This is um, Abbey Road Studio One. It's legendary. You know, Star Wars, all this other kind of monarchy has been recorded there. And now this sound is what you get. You've got that. That kind of sound. And I really love it. So. If you want, now, you've got lots of interesting alternatives here. Um, you've got close mics, yes, you've got close ribbon mics, you've got pop mics, which are kind of straight down the middle, so they, they're not um, um, panned to, uh, to seating position. You've got the two trees. You've got the more ambient um, omni tree and the more directional tree. Then you've got the outriggers, two lots of those, ambient mics. And down the end here, section leader, this is really useful. So it can add in, particularly into the legatos, you get that little bit more focus. But if you start messing about with these mic positions, and you only need a couple of them in, um, you could end up with something which is really bespoke to you, um, which um, sounds like your sound. If you want a big wide sound, you can just have, you know, a, quite a close mic plus the outriggers or the ambience and all the rest of it. They're not, there's not crazy numbers of them, but obviously, uh, every time you load up one of these, um, it uses uh, quite a lot more RAM. Um, it is, I think, well, okay, before we wrap this up um, and go on to actually write some music, um, it's worth saying that the uh, resources required to write, the, to, to um, use this, the, okay, you can see up in the top there, um, the, I've got eco mode on, so it's just loading in the legatos, which are one on 0.3, which is quite a lot. Um, but look at the number of voices. That's one note and it's 44 voices, 52 voices. Most sample players would fall over, would just go, you're having a laugh. What? I'm off. Up oh, yours, I know, etc. This one. So, the the twin parts of this epic project are that on the one hand, <laughs> you come up with a piece of technology which sounds incredible, but requires an enormous amount of processing power to make it work. Then you spend ages optimizing your player so that it can do it on normal resources, and that's what they've done. And Really good job. I mean, that's not to say it's going to run on your granny's um, PC with four gigabytes of RAM. Won't do that. You're going to need uh, a decent uh, PC or Mac to run it. Uh, and, uh, but then this is, as you know, it says on the tin, really. If you're going for the pro version, it's... Uh, it's the sort of 10 out of 10 of everything. It's as, it's as big as it's gonna get, it's bigger and it's as realistic and it's as emotive as it's ever gonna get. And 
so you must expect to support it with a appropriate technology. Um, you absolutely can run the core version um, on uh, less and um, that's absolutely super fine. Um, core version, what's the main difference is, here we go. Uh, one mic um, position, two legato, so you miss out on the all the um, clever stuff and the extended patches, but you still get all the rest of the stuff um, in there. So, I'm going to go and have a cup of tea, then I'm going to come back and I'm going to write another piece, a piece of music using this, and we'll post it as a separate video, I think, because I've been wittering on enough. So, um, congratulations, Spitfire. Uh, this is a very hard bar to raise, and you've just done it, so well done. See you in a minute and uh, when we'll be back with uh, a scoring demonstration of some description with this. Um, in the meanwhile, uh, let me re just remind you that Thinkspace Education uh, is uh, pretty good at teaching people how to do stuff and I think you're going to find this next trailer really interesting. The sound of the room is one of the most important things when it comes to the sound of the sample library. We will be touching on elements of composition and orchestration right the way through this course because it's really important. Almost everything I'm going to tell you will apply just as well to Logic, Cubase, Pro Tools as it does to Studio One, FL Studio, Digital Performer and all the rest of it.